G'day. Well, actually, technically, for me, it's not a good day. This is a short video talking about something that no beekeeper wants to have to talk about or go through. But it's happened to us and it can happen to anyone, so I thought I'd document it, talk about what, what's going on. By the way, what am I talking about? American fowl brood, AFB. I have had a positive test in a hive in my backyard and so in this video I'm going to take you through what it was that we had to do to deal with that. Uh, as it turned out the inspector that spotted it also detected AFB in another hive so I got together with that hobby beekeeper and helped her out by collaborating on the process that I'm about to show you in this video. Getting AFB is not a good thing, no one ever wants it to happen to themselves and in this case the only silver lining in the, in the fact that we got AFB is that we are very clear about where it came from. A few months ago we received a notice to say that a beekeeper within a two kilometre radius of where these hives were uh, had found AFB. What I discovered when the AFB inspector came to inspect our hives, he was going around inspecting all the hives in the area following up on the outbreak that happened in this particular apiary. What I found out from him was that, there were, that it was a hobby beekeeper, they had three hives in a row and all three of them died of AFB which is actually quite unusual and they all got robbed out which meant that every apiary in the district was at risk including mine. I haven't started doing spring inspections yet so I hadn't been through the hive that he inspected and of the four colonies that were on that site there was one cell with AFB in it in one hive but that one hive was a double stack it had another colony on top of it with a double screen board to keep the top colony warm from the bottom colony the top colony did not test positive for AFB but as you'll see I have treated it as a high risk colony and I have uh, done the same thing to it as I'm about to describe that I did to the positive test colony. Further than that about a month ago I took two colonies away from the site where that positive test was found. So as soon as I knew there was a positive test on that site I went to where those other two colonies were and I inspected them thoroughly, very very thoroughly. I didn't find any signs of AFB in them but what I did decide is that they were in the location where the rob out of the AFB infected hives had occurred therefore they are high risk hives and in the scheme of things I want to nip this AFB in the bud so I have treated them the same way as well. And by that, what do I mean? Well, the first step that we took, we're in New Zealand, so uh, this process is set out in law. Uh, the first step was to euthanize the bees. We did that by pouring petrol into the top of the hive and then closing it up. That was very effective. How much petrol do you ask? Because I didn't know the answer to that. I've never done that before. Uh, so I took a stab in the dark and I put about three quarters of a litre, what's that, about a pint of, uh, of petrol and that seemed to work. Is that the right amount? Is it too much? Is it too little? Don't know. If you know, if you've got more experience in this, and I hope you haven't, but if you've got more experience in having to euthanize hives, uh, put it in the comments down below. Tell me what is a sort of a minimum amount of petrol that you need or what other substance would you use to euthanize a hive. So I went round and euthanized all the hives that I had decided to destroy last night. Today we have, uh, I say we, because I am collaborating with this other uh, hobby beekeeper, and we have dug a hole on a farm where I, uh, I have friends who have this farm, it's not my property, but my, my hive that was positive and the hobby beekeeper's hive that was positive were both on urban set in an urban setting and you can't just burn a hive in an urban setting so we uh, 
we euthanized the hive, we closed it up completely, we locked it down so that there was no risk of bees or, or anything getting out of the boxes and we transported them here where I'm standing and we dug a hole and we lit the hives and we burned them. We burned everything except the metal lids which are going to be cleaned and disinfected and except the hive straps which are going to be cleaned and disinfected. Everything else went in the hole and got burned. The purpose of the hole, by the way, is to catch any wax or honey that gets molten that flows down as the boxes are introduced to the fire so that it's caught in one area and doesn't spread out across the ground, uh, leaving a residue which could reinfect more hives. There's a bit of paperwork involved in New Zealand. We have to do statutory declarations that we have done this process because the onus is on the beekeeper to take the actions. The, the uh, inspectors that discovered the AFB simply require an assurance that we have done it. I've actually gone further than that. I've taken pictures of the fire and flicked them through to the inspector and said, look, here are the hives burning. And I'm, I'm making this video. So you might ask, why am I prepared to admit that I got AFB in one of my hives? And the answer is that uh, getting AFB is not a sign that you're a bad beekeeper. What you do about it afterwards is what defines you as a beekeeper. If you simply ignore it and brush it under the carpet, pretend it didn't happen, uh, all you're going to do is create a much, much bigger problem in the future. So from my perspective, what we're better to do is to front up to it be ultra conservative so we've destroyed hives that didn't test positive for AFB but which we considered as beekeepers to be very high risk of developing AFB further down the track and uh, for the sake of just dealing with it right now it was our view that that was a better part. Going forward now just because we've burned these these colonies and these hives doesn't mean that the problem has gone away. To my mind it's very possible that somewhere in my operations I've uh, shifted a frame or frames from one hive to another and I've moved some AFB infected equipment from one part of my operation to another. So the coming 12 months I, we're going to have to be super super vigilant. Our spring brood checks are going to have to be absolutely scrupulous and every time we go into a hive and remove frames we've got to inspect the brood and make sure that we are looking constantly to see if that AFB is going to appear anywhere else in our operation. And if it does, we have to jump on it and deal with it as quickly as possible. So like I said, just a little quick video about something that a lot of beekeepers don't like to admit, don't like to talk about, but which to my mind is uh, it's an inevitable risk that every beekeeper takes. The luck of the draw is that many beekeepers go their whole beekeeping career without seeing AFB. Some, and now I'm one of them, will see it. And what defines you as a beekeeper, in my opinion, is how you respond to it. Good luck with your beekeeping. We'll see you later.